and let me know if you all can see my screen. Let me know if you all can go ahead and see my screen, okay? Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Good deal. Good, 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 good. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and get it going. So, how to invest in real estate with little to no money? How to invest in real estate with little to no money? So, guys, once again, my name is Gerald Harris, founder and creator of the uh, House Flipping Family Facebook group. Over 20,000 members in there now. Uh, also, the founder and creator of the House Flipping Guide YouTube channel, where we hit, we just recently hit over 50,000 members or 50,000 subscribers uh, over there on YouTube. Myself, a little bit about myself, I have over 15 years of real estate experience. Uh, I was a former agent, uh, served as a real estate agent for eight years, I was a loan officer. As a BPO agent, if you all don't know what that is, that is somebody who basically goes ahead and um, appraises property typically that's, that's in trouble. You know, property that's behind payments in the process of potentially going back to the bank. Uh, I have uh, real estate coaching experience uh, and the list goes on and on, guys. My story. A little bit about myself, I grew up in, I had mentioned a guy earlier, uh, I grew up in Pomona, California. I grew up as a dreamer and um, big time dreamer, big time entrepreneur, always had a passion to go ahead and do something. Uh, I remember I was like 18 years old and I think it was a guidance counselor at the time asked me what I wanted to do, but I didn't know. I just wanted to go ahead and get involved in something regarding real estate. Okay, something regarding real estate. Now, fast forward a little bit to after high school. Uh, I wanna say mid 20s, I wanna say 96, 97. Uh, I was a big time maverick up until that point. Big time maverick. I was an individual that was, um, I knew a lot, a ton of information. People were shocked. A lot of real estate, information, a lot of real estate investing information, a lot of uh, real estate. I was counseling. I remember at the time I was like in my twenties, I was giving brokers information about real estate. Uh, however, 1996 and I buy my first house. 97 bought my second house. 98, 99 ish was in the process of buying my third house and I found a foreclosure. It sucked. It sucked big time because even though uh, I had all this information, the thing that I was not willing to do was to, uh, I guess you would say, get myself somebody I can sponge off of, a mentor, somebody I can go ahead and uh, a coach, a, a trainer, or whatever that is, is. I just was not willing to go ahead and do that. Uh, one of the things I suffered from, guys, which may be some of the things you all suffer from as well, is this thing called limiting beliefs. Uh, a lot of that is shaped by people that are around us. So if you tell me two things about yourself, I'll tell you where you end up in five years. And that is this, what you read and who you associate with. Number one and two, what you read and who you associate with. Those two things begin to shape my limiting beliefs or my belief system. And I didn't realize and I didn't understand the power of association like I do now. The power of association, getting around winners, getting around people that will build you up and not tear you down. And so I had to go ahead and shake through that. Now, fast forward a little bit. Um, I relocated from Charlotte, I mean, from uh, California to Charlotte, North Carolina. Back in, back in 2012, 2012, left California, went ahead, went to Charlotte, North Carolina. It's been about two and a half years there. After that, uh, I relocated here to Atlanta, Georgia. While I was in Charlotte, I was courting this beautiful young lady here that you see. And uh, October, this month, 
2014, we ended up getting married. Been married a little over five years. Um, beautiful family. That's my wife, Alexandria. That's my baby girl, Imani. And I love real estate, guys. Real estate has never left me. I have an absolute passion for real estate. Now, one of the things that I get, one of the biggest questions that I get is, um, you know, and one of the things I ask is, are you struggling to make a profit in real estate? A lot of questions people ask is, you know, where do I start? How do I find a deal? Are properties really that cheap? Now, I want to bust some myths right now because a lot of people make excuses for themselves. And what happens is if you make an excuse so long, you begin to believe it. I don't know enough. You know a lot <laughs> and you have access to a lot. 96, no internet. Okay, 1996, 97, I'll tell you what, what there was. There was infomercials. And one of the infomercials that always used to come on was a guy by the name of Carlton Sheets way back in the days. Okay, there was no Google. There was no YouTube. No Facebook. These things just did not, you know, it, it just wasn't there. And so one of the things you can do is do your own research. You, don't, you know quite a bit. If you have a question, what many people do is they go to YouTube University and they type in whatever it is they're looking for, okay? It's like a huge menu for anything you wanna know all around the world, right? Another myth that I get is, a lot of people tell me, you know, well, Gerald, it doesn't work. No, it works. You all, you all are here. You all know that it works, okay? I don't have enough time. The challenging thing is you have enough time to go ahead and work your job. And some of you may have family, but when are you going to make enough time so that you can go ahead and have more time than you do money, right? So what, what I'm saying is a lot of us have more month than money. A lot of us have more month than money, right? The month runs out, um, or the month keeps going, and all of a sudden you run out of money, you live in paycheck to paycheck. Lots of times when people say they don't have enough time, they have more time than what they think they have. They have more time than what they think they have. Okay, it's just a matter of maintaining and managing your time. Another big one I get is, Gerald, what if the seller says no? What if they say no? Go to another seller. Talk to someone else. Don't let limiting beliefs destroy you. Don't let limiting beliefs take you down like they're doing with a lot of you. Stop doing that. Now, the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and talk about, guys, when I talk about how to invest in real estate with little to no money, I'm gonna talk about delinquent property taxes. Now, very simply, you know, you find owners with back property taxes, you contact the owner, you negotiate a price with that owner, you get them to go ahead and sign the contract, you sign the contract, and then you assign that contract to a cash buyer. You assign that contract to a cash buyer. And all I'm doing is simply breaking down this aspect, this, this, this niche called um, delinquent property tax investing with slash wholesaling, right? Delinquent property tax investing slash wholesaling. All you do is go ahead and get that property under contract, take it to a title company, you find the cash buyer, and they go ahead and they actually assign your contract and close out the deal. The profit that you make on a wholesaling uh, investment <coughs> is referred to as an assignment fee. Okay, but with delinquent property tax investing, with delinquent property tax investing, the beautiful thing about it is in your city, in your town, there are properties that people are just not targeting, right? People are targeting houses. They may not even be touching land, which is something we'll get into a little bit later, or apartment complexes. 
there was young, one young lady that came to me several months back and she had told me that she had a problem. I was like, well, what's your problem? She was like, well, I went in here and I got the list of the length of property taxes from the local county, but the problem is this, they're all full of commercial properties. What's the problem? There's no problem. And there's multiple ways to go ahead and contact these owners. You can use little le yellow letters. You can skip trace people and give them a call. Right? You can find many of these individuals on Facebook. What I'm saying, guys, is there's so many more resources today. It's just the information. It's just an overwhelming amount of information when you go ahead and go on there. On YouTube or Facebook or whatever that is. Right? So the Lincoln Property Tax, it is a beautiful niche to go ahead and get involved in. <clears throat> Wholesaling, like I mentioned before, contact motivated sellers, negotiate price, get contracts signed, assign the contract to a cash buyer, close the deal with a title company, collect the fee. You have some sub steps in there. That basically is what wholesaling is. I get so many people on a daily basis that ask me, hey, Gerald, can you mentor me? Hey, Gerald, can you train me? Hey, Gerald, can I understand wholesaling? Can I understand? This is what wholesaling is. Contact motivated sellers. Negotiate price. Get property under contract. Assign contract to a cash buyer. Close deal with the title company. Collect an assignment fee. You can go ahead and Google that as well. Vacant land investing, one of my all-time favorites. And it's a little different, guys. So with vacant land investing, what you'll do is you'll do data research. You'll bulk blast written offers to owners. Wait to receive offers in the mail. Buy the land, sell for a higher price, close deals, rinse and repeat. Vacant land investing. Incredibly, incredibly, incredibly attractive. So attractive, and I'll get into this a little bit later. So what I'm gonna break down now, and this is for hopefully some of the professionals in the house as well, uh, the professional real estate uh, agents, and maybe even some brokers if you all are on as well. I wanna break down something that's been confusing to many of you when it comes to real estate investing, because the one thing I receive all the time is, Gerald, I don't have enough monies to go ahead and to get started with real estate investing. I don't have enough money to go ahead and get started with real estate investing. Let me break this down to you so that you can further understand what real estate investing is. So real estate investing typically is broken down into two different sections. Okay, you have traditional real estate investing and you have something referred to as creative real estate investing. Sorry about that, guys. Now, traditional real estate investing, right? So I'm using these two examples because these are the most common. So the, tr the two aspects of traditional real estate investing are buy and hold properties. In other words, you're gonna buy a property, you're gonna hold that property, and you're going to go ahead and rent that property out, right? for something referred to as a positive cash flow. Now, the second aspect of traditional real estate investing is a fix and flip. You buy a property at discount, you put some work into the property, you give it to an agent to put back on the market, and then you flip it for a profit. Now, these typically entail houses and apartment complexes, okay? One of the things about traditional real estate investing is you need good credit, right? Anytime you see someone who is investing in flipping properties lots of times, uh, they may get a little creative, but as you go on in the beginning, you need good credit, you need good income, right? It's traditional. So you're gonna go ahead, typically you're gonna go ahead and go with a either a traditional lender who has a, real estate investing loan. In other words, you'll put you know, 15, 20% down. I think it's around 20%, something like that. 
And typically you go ahead and you'll deal with a realtor or you'll deal with a real estate investor. You also have to have some cash reserves on hand. The reason I wanna break this down right here, guys, is when you're dealing with traditional real estate investing, do you need money to go ahead and get started? You do. You need money and good credit, okay? It's just going to make life easier. Money and decent credit is just going to make life easier, guys, okay? You wanna make sure that you have cash reserves as well. Because even though you can go ahead, you can go quote unquote hard money, which is pretty much a pricey loan. Uh, they still want to, even though they qualify the property, they're still, they're still looking at your resources. They're still looking at, they're still peeking at credit. They're still looking at income. Okay, so when you're dealing with traditional real estate investing, yes, you do need money to invest in real estate, okay? When you're dealing traditionally, this is one of the reasons why the communication is so skewed oftentimes. A real estate agent will say something to the effect that they need a, <coughs> you know, you need a deposit, you need certain resources, credit, income, et cetera, et cetera. You need that in order to go ahead and invest traditionally. Now, let me break down something for you all. Let's focus on creative real estate investing. Now, these are aspects of investing like wholesaling, lease options, subject to investing, mobile home investing. Okay, with these creative real estate investing niches, you don't necessarily, you don't need credit. You don't need income. There's no need for a traditional lender. You deal directly with a seller or an investor. You don't necessarily need cash reserves. And this is basically what this is about. This entire presentation right here. You have traditional and now you have creative. With regards to creative real estate investing, the reason investing is so hot is this the creative aspect of it. Because there's a lot of people out there that don't have a ton of money. There's a lot of people out there that don't have the greatest credit. There's a lot of people don't have startup capital, et cetera, et cetera. So it gets tougher. So what do you do? You begin to invest creatively in real estate, make profit, and then you can go to the traditional side of investing. Right? So once again, with creative real estate investing, you don't need credit. You don't need income. You don't need to focus on traditional lending. You can deal directly with the seller or investor and you don't need cash reserves. I wanna make this point clear because there's a lot of people who, with, a, with regards to a lot of real estate agents, when you approach an agent and you all want to go ahead and do something creatively, with an agent that is not creative because they, they only know and are taught for the most part traditional real estate investing. You're gonna run into a brick wall. This is the wall that you hit when dealing with a real estate agent. Real estate agents are not bad. I was an agent for eight years, okay? They're not bad. It's just, you want, if you're gonna focus on real estate, you wanna focus on something called an investor-friendly agent, an investor friendly agent. Why do I say that? Because they're going to understand wholesaling, lease options, mobile home investing, subject to invest. They're going to stand creativity because you're creatively trying to put a deal together to make profit. These are two aspects of real estate investing, traditional real estate investing and creative real estate investing. Now, you have traditional real estate investing and you have creative real estate investing. And then you have land. <laughs> land fits into a category all its own. It's one of my all time favorites. Um, you can do some really awesome things with this thing called land. You can buy and hold, which is referred to as land banking. 
Um, you can, when you own the property, when you own the asset outright, you can go ahead and sell it on payments. You can be either traditional or non-traditional. It fits both into that bubble. You can wholesale land. You can lease option land. You can do subject to with land. You can deal with a realtor, an investor, a seller, and you can even get more creative than this. Land is beautiful. And quite frankly, everyone that's on this call, I want you all to know something. Every piece of property you're dealing with, before it was property, it was just land. Real estate bird dogging. Now, this really is a very interesting niche, and this is how you can begin to familiar, familiarize yourself with regards to real estate investing. Now, a bird dog is someone who finds properties for experienced investors, gets paid for contracted and closed deals. Now, the payment depends on how much the bird dog has done. So, for instance, if you are a real estate bird dog and you're finding the deal and you're analyzing the deal, uh, meaning you're doing your due diligence, you're comping the deal, seeing what the deal is worth, all these different things, then the investor that you're working with probably is going to compensate you a little bit more money. Okay, Maybe $1,000, $1,500, maybe even $2,000 a pop when he closes the deal. I'm sorry, when he or she closes the deal. Okay, But if you're just finding properties, beat up properties, addresses, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I remember one gentleman, uh, he was paying people like $2 just to go ahead and shoot, text them an address or something like that. You know, so you had investors out there that were making $100 a day, just shooting addresses of properties that looked like they need work. And then you had some investors, some bird dogs that were making $500 a pop. Some of them were making $1,000 a pop. So what I'm saying is this, those things in terms of payment being a real estate bird dog, are they vary. And so that depends on what you negotiate with that investor, okay? But it's a great way to be a, and essentially a bird dog is a property finder. You're finding deals for an investor so the investor can go ahead and close. Once that investor closes the deal, they will go ahead and compensate you. you gotta be careful though, because you got a lot of unethical investors out there. Now, how do you go about understanding how to close real estate deals? How do you do that? How do you go about understanding that process with the coach? Is this for you? You have to ask yourself with regards to real estate investing, is it something that uh, where you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired? You're tired of guessing or you're tired of driving for dollars and not being able to understand how to analyze a deal. You're tired of, Gerald, I want to go ahead and get into to traditional real estate investing. Okay, great. Uh, Gerald, I want to go ahead and build up some cash and invest creatively. Okay, great. They both work. The question is, do you work? So this is for people who take action. On the contrary, this is not for people who take action with regards to real estate investing. You all see it all over the internet. People closing deals and holding up checks and doing this. And, and, and by the way, that's just not the way I hold up checks. That's, that can be a dangerous thing, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, you don't have to do that. Maybe because I'm a little old school and whatnot, so. Uh, if this is not for you, this is not for somebody who is consistently doubting, talking themselves out of things, right? Questioning themselves. What will we focus on? Delinquent property taxes, absentee owners, driving for dollars, yellow letter marketing, lease options, no equity, pretty houses, vacant land, of course, Wholesaling, 
real estate and investor and agent profits, uh, YouTube channel creation. Any of you have seen with over 50,000 subscribers, what if you had a channel that had over 10,000 where you attracted nothing but motivated sellers in your area? Private money and a lot more. This is a gentleman who went ahead and got what he did is he focused on, he followed my group, bought some of my information and went ahead and closed a $34,000 deal focusing on code violations. If many of you know what that is, many of you may not. So let me go ahead and give you a little bit of example of code violations. A code violation is something where Let's say for instance, you have a house where the house has been boarded up. Let's say a door has been boarded up for, let's say a month, a couple of windows as well. And so the city drives around and they go ahead and they send you a warning stating that you need to go ahead and fix that window in, in, in that door or else the violation escalates. Well, the longer that problem lingers, the more expensive that problem becomes. And there's a lot of owners that live out of state and in state who have code violations. And those violations don't just exist on houses. It's a lot of people with code violations that, 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 that have code violations on land and apartment complexes. So those are code violations, just problem properties that make it to a list and as that list begins to echo, escalate the end of that list is something referred to as condemned properties it's where a property has gotten so bad that the city goes ahead and is in the process of getting ready to tear that property down now the demolition list that's that's another niche within itself this is ronald gerald i just want to thank you your knowledge is incredible thank you for your help someone that has uh, worked with me. So screenshot, thank you, thank you, Gerald. Special Jewel, let me see. Yeah, there's special Jewel being added to your crown in heaven. <laughs> Gerald, thank you so much for putting out the script. It's just something I went ahead and I shared uh, within my Facebook group. Very comprehensive, straightforward content. God bless you. Leah, so me and my baby girl, we were at somewhere, but everybody was asking this question right here. I need a coach, I need a coach, I need a coach. I, need, I get that daily, daily. I need a coach, I need help, I need a coach, I need help, I need a coach. You might have tried some real estate marketing systems that have yielded less than ideal results in the past. This is my guy, Reggie, just going ahead and giving me a little bit of love, a little bit of feedback and whatnot. It's a beautiful thing when you can go ahead and help people. So in my four-week course, this is, this is what is included, okay? Two trainings a week, as well as a weekly one-on-one. -on -one. So that's really three private Facebook group because I the one thing I can't do is many of you that live in different states there's no way for me to the only way to do it really would be online private Facebook group paid for accounts provided accountability coach property reports mortgage information etc cetera, etc cetera. data tree by either data tree or core logic which are the two most expensive in the country I think um, and two of the two of the three two of the four I think largest uh, data aggregators in the world, I mean, uh, in the United States. Uh, scripts for buyers and sellers, private money, hard money education, two self-help books, partner up uh, with myself, uh, different niches and much, much more. Now, I told you all what's been happening in the Facebook group. I get asked this daily, multiple times a day. Does anyone want to help me? Wholesaling in Atlanta. Would love a mentor. A gentleman by the name of Chris. 
with over 20,000 people is just staggering. Just the amount of help that people need. Any ideas or opinions on having a mentor or wholesale? Does anyone want to be a mentor? So I get this all the time. And this one right here is interesting because I just posted this about three hours ago because I wanted to go ahead and get some feedback for this particular uh, training right here. And I asked who was looking for a mentor or coach register below. And many of you responded. Many of you responded. 91 people to be, to be exact. Well, it's probably less than 91 because I responded to a lot of you. So it's probably more like 75. That's in three hours. So I imagine tomorrow I'll probably be like about 1150. Four week coach, coaching with Gerald Harris. So it's a four week coaching. The value it at 2,500. Accountability coach, 1,500. One on one access to Gerald. A total value, as you see below, is $6,500. Now, a fast action bonus, if you all go ahead and take action by tonight, midnight what i will do and this is the challenge because i get i get this probably every hour on the hour and many people i do not respond to private message email access to gerald immediate response which is what a lot of people are looking for because they, they have deals they just don't know how to close deals i'm going to give you all something just because you have a motivated seller does not mean you have a deal once again, just because you have a seller that is motivated does not mean you have a deal. You could be locking up a property under contract that's almost at retail and you are not doing that seller or yourself any service. Stop doing that because you're hurting. All you're doing is hurting the situation. You're hurting them, you're hurting yourself because you're wasting everybody's time. YouTube traffic for entrepreneurs, of course, and my wife and myself just recently finished teaching you all what I've done on YouTube and how you all can attract motivated seller, sellers locally. A free, cop, a free copy of my lease option course as well. Retail value it at is $2,500. Four-week real estate investor coaching. Retail value is $9,000. Total retail value is $9,000. Your investment would be $9.97 for four weeks or two payments of $5.97. Will you be the next success? Ask yourself that. Take action now. So what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna open it up for q and I need your questions. So if you all are interested, go ahead and go to this, the bit.ly link right here. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to drop it in the chat as well. I can go ahead and bring it on up. Go ahead and drop this in the chat. Eddie Smith, I live in Latonia and love to have a mentor, even from Atlanta. I can drive to and look, let me see, train, I will. Wow, you drive a semi. How long you been driving semi, Eddie? Let me know. You all ask questions. Feel free to ask questions. Let me go ahead and uh, paste that link in the description. Oh, <laughs> let me go ahead and open this up so that you all can see me. All right? Oh, Eddie, let's uh, let's do something. Tamisha said, I'm a single parent with no money. Uh, let's get going, guys. 
Okay, Tamisia. Uh, let's go ahead and get you some money. Uh, Ray had asked, should I pull the link of property tax list in the counties near me? You can, Ray, but what is after that? You know what I mean? What what's so once you go ahead and you pull the list and you get the list going, what's what's the next step? Do you know how to analyze that list? Uh, do you know how to uh, weed the list out so that you're just talking to the low hanging fruit? Right? You're just talking to the low hanging fruit. You know what I mean? So what's next once you go ahead? Now you can pull any, you can get as many lists as you want. I'm gonna give you all a little tip. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a little something. There's some of you that live in counties that are hidden jewels where nobody is doing delinquent property tax investing. Now, this is the thing. The people that are just eating like crazy, that have probably been eating for the last 30, 40 years, they're not on the internet talking about the Lincoln property taxes. They figured out the hidden, the, the, the hidden um, counties throughout the United States, right? They figured that out. And so they're kind of keeping that list to themselves and whatnot. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Let me see. Uh, so Destiny, oh, that's D. What's going on, D? Um, it depends, right? So she had asked a question. Do we have to pay for a tax list? That depends. Some counties are free. Now, some counties cost a little bit of money. It could be maybe like 50 bucks, could be 100 bucks. But some counties are ridiculous when it comes to acquiring a list of delinquent property taxes, right? Some counties are ridiculous. Some counties are just crazy priced. I don't understand. However, you can look at that two ways, right? So you can look at that like, wow, this is very expensive. Or you can look at, like, you can look at that like, well, I wonder how many other people are acquiring this expensive list of delinquent property taxes. And if you're getting that list directly from the county, you know, I guarantee you if that list is expensive or if it costs any kind of money, anything that takes you, anything that's difficult to acquire is probably worth going for. Anything that's difficult to acquire is probably worth. So once again, going back to the Lincoln property tax list, I've gotten that question before. And one gentleman, I forgot what county he was in. His list ran like eight hundred dollars. It was ex crazy expensive. It was like seven, seven or eight hundred dollars. Crazy expensive. The challenge that he was having really was affording that list. Right. The challenge that he was having was affording that list. So he asked me, he was like, this is ridiculous. This is too expensive. Well, you can look at it a couple of ways. You can look at it as not, as, as it's too expensive, or you can look at it as, wow, I wonder how many other investors are going for a list like this. And I would partner up with maybe two or three people, split the cost and tackle that list. Makes sense. Uh, let me see. Uh, Tavares asked, what's your favorite target list of homes? Land. <laughs> now, land. In the beginning, as you're wholesaling real estate and you're focusing on wholesaling real estate, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to only focus on three, four, and five bedroom homes. Once again, focus on three bedroom homes, four bedroom homes, and five bedroom homes. They're just a lot easier to go ahead and move, especially your three and four bedroom homes. 
they're a lot easier to go ahead, turn them around, put them on a contract, and then assign the contract. So you want to focus on three bedroom, two baths, four bedroom, two baths, even four bedroom, three baths. Stay within that sweet spot. Also, if you all are thinking about wholesaling real estate, trust me when I tell you this. If you're wholesaling real estate and you have that property for three months, it's not a wholesale deal. That doesn't make any sense. You know, don't do that to an owner and don't do that to yourselves when it comes to wholesaling real estate. Don't do that. Uh, Sam had asked, hello, I'm interested in your land flipping course. Is there a lot of marketing costs involved? Uh, there, so you can do that a couple of ways, Sam. Um, land is, and, and that's why on the presentation, I, I put land is, is its own kind of entity, if you will. You know, so you can wholesale land two ways, guys. Let me give you a little bit of insider secret. So you can wholesale land just like you do houses. You go ahead, an owner wants to go ahead and sell the lot. You put the property under contract. You turn around and you assign that contract to a cash investor, what have you. You assign that property for whatever else you bought it for above that. And you make your profit, have a nice day. That's one way of going ahead and wholesaling land. That is not the way I'm, I'm, I like to do land, if that makes sense. So a better way to do land, no, nah, I think I'm gonna, I'll probably save that. <laughs> bulk offers, a better way to do land is bulk offers to owners, cash offers to owners. They don't want those lots. Many of them don't. Uh, Uh, Dennis asked, uh, Gerald, I work two jobs and driving for dollars and finding properties and not sure how to find absentee owners. Dennis, I mean, let's connect. Let's, uh, I mean, I can teach you uh, and I can teach you better ways. Like I have a free link, but it's, it, it may not be the best for yourself when it comes to uh, finding owners uh, of absentee, finding absentee owners, you can always register like with a data source or something like that. You can go ahead and go to uh, datatree.com, uh, list source to find the owners. You can also go to the local county and look at the address at your local county. Uh, let me see. Anonymous asked, I have a couple of properties and had a hard money loan. I ran out of money. In foreclosure, headed to bankruptcy, have equity in the properties, but can't get refinance uh, credit. Uh, it's in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, so I'm going to tell you this because that's how that it, it kind of reminds me of my story. Um, if you're in foreclosure, sell them at a discount or just find me somewhere online. Uh, I don't want to, yeah, I would go ahead and I would sell them at a discount. So basically this gentleman is in foreclosure and uh, headed to bankruptcy. The properties have equity. I would sell the properties at a discount if they still have, <clears throat> because I, I ran into the same thing. The challenge with hard money is this, guys. This is a little tip. Um, let me see, Steve said I can't get through to the link. Uh, can you all see the link on the screen? Bitly slash REI real, real Estate Coaching 123. I just went ahead and I put the link right here as well. Um, so <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Alexis, thank you. So one of the things I'm going to tell you about hard money is this lots of times your problem with hard money has nothing to do with hard money. 
the challenge that you run into with hard money has to do with the contractors lots of time, right? So you got, you went ahead, got a property, closed the deal, hard money closed, right? Now you're beginning your project. You have multiple contractors that you've gotten bids from. And the challenge with that is when these contractors come in, they give you a bid for X. One says 20,000, one says uh, 25,000, one says 37,000. Of course, you go ahead and you go with the one for 20,000. This is the problem. It's funny how contractors mysteriously uh, find additional problems and situations in your property. And the problem with that is they know that you're green. What I mean by that is they know that you're new. Okay. And it's, uh, it's a situation where it's a situation where they'll go ahead and they'll underbid everybody only to get into the project and jack the price up. I can sit here and say it's the oldest trick in the book, but you just don't know who's who. So one of the things I'll be going over in my training is how to weed out and find trustworthy contractors to go ahead and deal with, because there's a lot of crooks out there. And if you're fixing and flipping property, uh, that's the biggest, if you're fixing and flipping property, no problem. If you're fixing and flipping property and you're new, and they know that you're new, it's a problem because that hard money loan can go sour real quickly. You know, one of the things that new investors do often, so I'm not knocking you, I'm, I'm talking about myself here in the beginning. What I did was the challenge that I did, and I want you all to think whenever you buy a property, I want you to think like a hard money lender. So whenever you buy a property, I want you to, um, I want you to overestimate costs and underestimate value just a little bit. Because when you're new, what we oftentimes do is this, we underestimate value and, excuse me, we underestimate fix up cost and we overestimate value. When you're new, I want you to really, really look at the property like a hard money lender would because lots of times a hard money lender man they'll go ahead and they'll knock you on value like crazy so i want you to look at it is i want you to underestimate value and overestimate fix-up costs just a little bit so that you're not caught off guard with any surprises so if you go ahead and you, you're somebody a contractor comes to the house somebody that you trust and they tell you hey yes um it costs $25,000 to fix up this property. I want you to think in your mind, that's really 35,000, 35, maybe even 40. Why? Because now you're not caught off guard with any surprises. Trust me, I have been there. It sucks. You know, I mean, it's hurting your credit. I have been there, man. It is. Sorry that's happening to you, man. Um, that's, that's not cool. That's not cool. Uh, link not working, link not working. Let me see. Uh, let me see. So Myra, I'm gonna go ahead and send the link and you all let me know if that link, because that's multiple people. Chantel said, I have been there too. It sucks. It sucks losing property like that. I can't stand that. Uh, so Anonymous asked, uh, what if I'm a newbie? Is this coaching program going to help me or is it just uh, for advanced investors? So let me give you all a little bit of information. I have close to 100,000 people following me on multiple platforms combined. Um, this information 
was created for new investors. In other words, when I began the channel, number one, I didn't think it was going to get this big. Number one. Number two, um, I, I didn't necessarily want to cater to seasoned investors because I just felt as though seasoned investors already know everything. It's not the seasoned investors and it's not even the new investors. It's the people that's just curious about real estate investing, right? That want to know, hey, they, they like, I get it all the time. Like, wow, what is that? Or wow, that's interesting. So once again, it's perfect for you. This is, so the, the training essentially is four weeks and I just went ahead, I reviewed it. Uh, four weeks of information and what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and hold your hand in and through the process, right? So that you all don't have to guess anymore. Like for instance, anonymously, let's take your situation. Let's say for instance, had you contacted me and had you already been in the pro, obviously it's, it's not, um, the, the training was not available as of yet, but had you contacted me beforehand, I could have went ahead and, you know, just shared my experience, shared my story. Matter of fact, uh, my foreclosure story is on my YouTube channel. I don't hide that. Not a lot of people make themselves that vulnerable. You know what I mean? Uh, it's pain and it's real, right? And uh, the objective is to avoid that. The objective is to avoid that pain, right? So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna go ahead, I'll go ahead and I'll fix the link for those many of you that are interested. Um, I don't understand what's going on, but uh, so the pain helped me, helped me too. Uh, I remember back in, this had to be 2008, I was helping a gentleman and his wife in their 80s uh, in Ontario, California, never forget it. And I remember sitting across the table with this gentleman and his property was in the process of going back to the bank. He was trying to negotiate a loan modification and he was sending, he had some kind of arrangement where he was working out, I think with, with uh, either Wells Fargo or I forgot what bank it was at the time. This was back in, oh, oh don't get me the line, oh, 07, oh, 08 maybe. Uh, yeah, because his son was still alive. Something like that. Um, but he had worked out a, an arrangement with, uh, I think it was Wells, Wells Fargo or something like that, where he was paying them like every two weeks. We sat across the table for 30 minutes as I was coming over to his house to do a BPO. After our conversation, I got up to leave. He took that check and slid it over to me. And it was a check for $4,000. And I looked at him. I said, what is that for? He said, Gerald, he said, you've told me more in uh, 30 minutes than the bank has in the last year and a half of trying to work out my situation. And I looked at him. I said, wow. I said, I don't do business like that. I took that check and I slid it back to him. I don't do business like that. I said, if you need some assistance, I'll go ahead and I'll list your property for you. So, yeah, it's a lot of, um, Mrs. Madden said, I'm tired of struggling with paycheck to paycheck. We all, I mean, this is the thing. <laughs> you, I get that so much, right? One of the things I tell people, and I had a gentleman on here recently. Actually, he wasn't even on here. He was, um, I think, in my group or something like that. And he had asked, okay, um, I told him I was gonna go ahead and give him a free option with regards to getting some training or coaching or whatever. So here's the free option, YouTube, YouTube University, Facebook groups, biggerpockets.com, YouTube, Facebook groups, biggerpockets.com. 
those three, if you're not interested in getting trained mental, whatever it is, those three will go ahead. It's free information that will go ahead and help you out. Dennis said, I love land. Dennis, I'm telling you, so I, you know what? This is the thing. I, give it a couple of years, and I'm going to bring land to the forefront, guys. I'll tell you that. Mark, just listen. Just mark my words. It's just something that, that I, I, I know about it. There are some things there that most people don't know. Most people don't know that there are ways where you can partner up with the electric company with regards to land. You know, sometimes many of you all will see like solar panel on land where you can go ahead and lease your land to it. It's, it's, it's insane. It's a beautiful niche, then. I mean, it's a beautiful niche, Dennis. Uh, Let me see. Uh, let me try. Now, I will say this, uh, Aruna. So one niche that I don't have, that I don't have personal knowledge with is the BRRR. It's where you go ahead, you buy a property, uh, you, re you refinance the property, you, you rent it out, rent out the other side, you stay in the property. I don't have knowledge with that. I apologize. Uh, and I'll be upfront and honest about that. Uh, I've never invested in that. Uh, oh, you said you had a bad business partner. Sorry about that. Man. Uh, let me see. You know what? What I'm gonna do is this, guys. Uh, when I was under the impression, there's about three or four of you that have asked. Dennis said, "Land is gold." Dennis, you have no idea. This land is gold. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. So Kenya asked. I want to get off into investing in mobile homes. Is it beneficial to flip or hold and rent? Both, both, okay? You can flip mobile homes for some great cash, especially going ahead and going the seller financing route, both. You know, it's the same thing people tell me with houses. It's not, I'm gonna be honest and I'll be upfront with you. Uh, with regards to just wholesaling houses. It's not beneficial to wholesale each and every house. Also, I'm going to let you all know something. With regards to houses, contrary to popular belief, you can make money on houses with no equity. Once again, you can make money, a lot of money, on houses with zero, zero equity. Pretty houses and pretty neighborhoods make for great deals. Let me just say that. You just have to know how to work them. And all you need is a motivated seller. So what, what exactly is a motivated seller, guys? Motivated seller is someone who is flexible on price, someone who is flexible on terms, or both. What is a motivated seller? A seller that is flexible on price, or terms, or both. It's a motivated seller. So let me go ahead and get off here, guys. I am going to email all of you. Give me about half an hour. I'm going to go ahead and email all of you a link to the registration uh, for the coaching. We'll go ahead and open that up. And uh, I will tell you this before I go ahead and get off. Uh, Stop wasting money. Stop guessing real estate, right? Stop guessing. You don't have to guess real estate, right? Uh, find someone who can shorten the learning curve for you. Number two, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take action. Okay, so 
I dropped that link about four times, guys. Let me know if you all see it. I went ahead and I put it in the chat. And <clears throat> I went ahead and, let me see, put it. So maybe just right here. And what I'll do is I'm going to email all of you. Give me about 30 minutes. Okay. So, yeah, give me about 30 minutes. And uh, I'm going to tell you all this. Don't be afraid. You don't have to. I'm here. You know, thousands of people are, are you know, that they're following me for a reason. You know, so anyways, guys, um, give me about 20, 30 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot the link to every one of you that is online and uh, you all have a beautiful and blessed evening. Y'all take care, have a good one.